All right, kiddos, let's talk about polarization. Uh, first thing we should talk about is the nature of electromagnetic waves. All right, uh, they're produced by the oscillation of electric charge. And actually, the best way uh, to explain this is this image right here. All right, um, is absolutely uh, very helpful in understanding exactly what's happening here. Whoops, get this all screwy. Uh, so. The big idea here, what you have, this is an AC generator. It's telling us is that we have a conductor in the y-axis, okay, with current that's going up and that's coming down, okay? This current is varying sinusoidally, all right? So the big idea here is that you're doing two different things, okay? The direction of the voltage changes sinusoidally. Betsy Cohan Moffat, please come to the main office. Betsy Cohan Moffat, please come to the main office. <laughs> and that's a lot of fun getting to have that uh, in the middle of me trying to do this. Um, so the direction of the voltage is going to change, all right, um, sinusoidally. I'm not sure if I spelled that right. And then the direction of the current also. Same thing. All right. Um, so the reason why I mentioned both of these things, first, all right, is that the direction of the voltage, all right, changing sinusoidally, going up and down on this conductor, all right, is going to change the electric field. All right. That's what's going to cause that to happen. Okay. Uh, the reason for that, right, is that you're going to have, you know. A build up of a certain type of charge on one end and build up a certain type of charge on the other end, all right? Uh, constantly changing, all right? And that's what's going to cause this varying uh, electric field right here, okay? So it's this uh, electric field being sent out uh, from this wire. Because of the current changing direction, okay, we know that anytime we have moving charge, we have a magnetic field, all right, that's going to be generated. So that magnetic field, all right, is going to come out in this direction here, right? It's going to be coming out in the Z direction, which is in and out of the board, right? And that's going to be caused by our uh, constantly changing um, uh, current that's being uh, sent up and down uh, this little conductor, all right? So remember how we said if we use the right-hand rule, okay, uh, that tells us the direction in which the current comes out of the page, okay? So if the current is going down, all right, it's going to cause this guy to have come out of the page here in front of the conductor and this guy to go out of the page when it's going up. All right. And so that's going to be going back and forth as well. So what we see okay, is when we have an alternating current uh, in a wire, it's going to produce um, electromagnetic waves. All right. We have these uh, time varying um, electric uh, fields and time varying magnetic fields. And that's exactly what an electromagnetic wave is. In fact, at different energy levels, that's how we produce radio waves all the way up through. What we could produce is uh, gamma waves, okay? But that's what uh, a photon is, that's what light is, that's what all electromagnetic radiation is, is a varying electric and magnetic field, all right? So just to you know, make a few notes here, first thing to note is uh, the electromagnetic waves are produced by the oscillation. And actually, there are some other ways as well, okay? But the one we're going to talk about right now is the oscillation of electric charge. All right? It cr creates or uh, produces varying uh, electric and magnetic fields, all right? I think you guys already have this written up. I'm just... Uh, filling it in here, all right, something that you want to hi uh, highlight for yourselves. And these are perpendicular to each other, all right? And the other thing to notice here is that the electric field and magnetic field, they're both what we can consider transverse waves. Okay, and how they oscillate, okay? So what that tells us right there is that the vibration, all right, uh, the direction 
of the motion of the uh, field is perpendicular to the direction of uh, motion of energy transfer. Okay? Um, turns out that electromagnetic waves, they all travel. Okay? Um, at the speed of light. It's a big idea there. Okay? In, uh, and this is in a vacuum. Otherwise, um, it's traveling uh, at the uh, a slower speed, actually. All right. So, oops. Just gonna move these down a little bit so we can actually. There we go. Right on that and talk about it. All right. So, polarized burn. On polarized light, if we have, say, something like a light bulb, which is going to produce light, all right, um, by radiation, uh, radiation, radiation of thermal, uh, thermal radiation, excuse me, okay, um, getting the filament really, really hot, it's going to produce visible light, okay. Um, what we get here is a type of light, okay, um, in which the electric field Uh, vector, that is, the electric field vector, vibrates in random directions. So what this says is that there's tons and tons and tons of uh, electromagnetic waves being emitted, and that the direction of the electric field vibration is in every direction. It's completely random, okay? Uh, you, you know, you have ridiculous uh, orders of magnitude worth of photons or electromagnetic waves being emitted. So it's a truly random distribution of the direction that the electric field is going to vibrate in. Okay? And this is how we represent it. The waves of these lights, if we look, imagine these rays, are going to be travel outward from the light like this. right? And so if we say if it's going to the right here, the electric field is denoted in its terms of its oscillation uh, in this kind of three-dimensional isometric view all right, uh, with the um, direction of travel being this x direction here, call this the x, all right? And if we have a three-dimensional view, you know, we'll call this the y, and this guy comes out as the z, all right? And that z is coming in and out of the board there, all right? So this uh, random electric field vi uh, vibrations are happening to the y and z axis, all right? So the next thing we'd like to define is polarized light, all right? And polarized light is light in which uh, the electric field vibrates only in one direction. Or one plane, you could say. So you see here the difference between the image with unpolarized light and this image right here is that there's only one direction for the electric field vector to vibrate in, okay? Um, that is typically true um, if we have this example here of charge oscillating up and down only in one uh, plane, or one dimension, all right? So uh, the polarization of light, um, how we can actually make it polarized from unpolarized light is the point of this chapter. So the first thing, all right, is that we have polarization of sunlight. We take sunlight, all right, to be unpolarized light, and the way that it can be polarized is reflection off a non-metallic surface. So the reflection from a non-metallic surface is what's going to do this. This is what we refer to oftentimes as glare off of uh, water, all right? Um, if you guys have ever been near a lake and uh, had sunlight reflecting up into your eyes. Okay, so we have this incoming um, unpolarized incident light, okay? So this is our diagram that we're going to start drawing here. You should pause this and get at least this drawn. So this incoming ray... tells us that we have um, is unpolarized 
incident money. Okay? And so we're going to have two things happen here. The first thing that we're going to have happen is we're going to have some light that's going to be refracted and passed through, transmitted, and some light that's going to be reflected. All right? We're going to describe both of these types of light really quickly. Uh, just to note right here, these arrows, they indicate the direction of polarization. So both of these rays here, okay, the reflected ray and the refracted ray, have light that has been polarized. In other words, now the electric field is only vibrating in the direction that uh, is perpendicular to the direction that they're traveling in. Okay? Um, the, dots in, uh, the dots here as well indicate polarization. into and out of the board. So whereas the arrows, they indicated polarization um, up, you know, perpendicular to the ray, but in the plane of the board, okay? So we, we can write that over here, perpendicular to ray, but in the plane of the board. Uh, the, dots, uh, it, the dots indicate polarization. It's perpendicular to the ray, but in and out of the board. Right? So we're just showing the two possible directions. So before, it's completely unpolarized here with the reflected ray and the refracted ray. We're saying both of these have some components uh, that they have been lost, okay? And there are, there's only a partial component of the electric field coming down the refracted ray and only a partial component coming through the reflected field. That's in the reflected ray, excuse me. All right? So let's talk about what this means a little bit more, okay? Um, if sunlight comes in, all right, it's unpolarized sunlight, uh, the very first thing that happens, okay, is that the reflected and refracted rays are what we call partially polarized. So what this is telling us, okay, is that some of the light, okay, uh, in the components, in, in the uh, plane of vibration uh, that, that is occurring has been removed, okay. So it's not completely random, it's only vibrating in a few different directions, all right, um, or, or fewer directions. But there's, there's a special case here, okay, where if the, the angle between the reflected ray and the refracted ray is 90 degrees. We get this little right angle here. What ends up happening is that that reflected ray all right, is completely plane polarized. And so uh, that is to say all right, um, that the electric field only vibrates in and out of the page. So this is uh, this gets into vectors here. I don't have a good conceptual explanation for this for you. All right, um, all, all that it pretty much is here is just that uh, which I just said that the uh, plane of vibration uh, is going to be completely uh, horizontal or in and out of the page, I should say, um, if those two uh, rays are at 90 degrees. And I, I think the reason for that it has to do with um, vectors. Uh, in terms of the component of the ray um, of the electric field uh, that would be going perpendicular to the reflected ray um, must somehow end up all in the refracted ray or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. Okay? Um, but anyways, so how do we figure out what this condition is? Well, we're going to use Snell's law right here. All right? And um, if we have air as the first uh, medium, which it typically is, okay, uh, and we have, you know, a second medium, the refracted medium, which we have a refraction, all right, and we're solving for um, 
what the special angle is, all right? In other words, what's the incident angle that's going to cause us to have 90 degrees between the reflected ray and the refracted ray? Remember, the incident angle and the reflected ray are going to be equal to each other, all right? So if you have 90 degrees here between the refracted ray and the uh, reflected ray, plus you have the reflected ray over here, we're going to be able to do some uh, geometry, okay, really quickly over here and show us that the reflect the uh, refracted ray, excuse me, is just equal to 90 minus the incident ray, all right? Uh, so I substitute that in here, um, and what I end up with is uh, sine of 90 minus theta sub i, which is just the cosine of that angle, and we see that the uh, index of refraction is just equal to, um, pardon me, the index of the, ref uh, right, the index of refraction for the refracted medium, the second medium, is just equal to 10 of the angle uh, that the light is incident on, all right, to cause uh, the condition right here, all right, where the reflected ray is completely plain polarized. And this is what we call Brewster's angle, all right. Um, so at Brewster's angle, that's when we have the reflected and refracted rays are going to be at 90 degrees. So in the case of going from air to water, okay, the refraction index is 1.33. We can calculate Brewster's angle, and we see it's 53 degrees from the normal. Okay, um, so again, special condition uh, where we have light um, that's going to be uh, completely plane polarized from being unpolarized uh, to begin with. Uh, we're going to stop the video now, and we're going to talk about uh, polarization through polarizers in the next one.